In this example, we want to find the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of the function of x equals to 2 times cosine x plus sine of 2x on the interval between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, so the first thing is to go ahead and find the critical numbers. Okay, and we're going to do that by taking the derivative and then setting that uh, setting the derivative of the function equal to zero. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x. So we have the derivative of cosine is minus sine of x. So we're going to get minus two times sine of x plus the derivative of sine is is cosine. So we're going to get minus, I'm sorry, plus 2 times cosine of 2x. Okay, so the 2 is, the 2 in front of the cosine is coming from the chain rule. So we took the derivative of 2x, so that gives us a value of 2. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, set this equal to 0. Okay, so we have minus 2 sine x plus 2 cosine x equals to 0. So cosine, I'm sorry, cosine 2x. Okay. All right, so to solve this, uh, we need to uh, use one of the identities, okay? So this part here, cosine 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x, okay? So we're going to get minus 2 sine x okay, plus 2 times 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay. Equals to 0. Okay, so ideally, um, if you recall from pre-calculus, to solve a trig equation, uh, you want to, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's best to have all the functions and all the expressions in terms of one trig function, okay? That's the first approach we take, okay? So from here, uh, we're going to get minus 2 times sine x plus 2 minus 4 sine squared x equals to 0, okay? All right, so rearranging the terms here, okay, we're going to get minus 4 times sine squared x minus 2 times sine x plus 2 equals 0, okay? So this is, uh, we can reduce this by dividing everything by uh, negative 2, okay? So that's going to leave us with 2 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1, okay? All right, so... Basically, we have, uh, this is uh, a trig equation where we can do a, we can use a substitution and then solve in that, solve in that variable and then substitute, and then substitute back, okay? So we're going to let y, okay, we're going to let y be equals to sine of x, okay? So when we do that, we're going to get, okay, 2 times y squared plus y minus 1 equals to 0, okay? So this is going to give us, okay, we can factor this, so this is going to give us 2y minus 1 times y plus 1 equals to 0, okay? So from here, okay, we get y equals to 1 half. From here, we get y equals to negative 1, okay? So since we... Um, we did a substitution here, so we need to uh, substitute these back into this equation to solve for x, okay? Okay, so we're going to substitute those into there and then solve for x from there. Okay, so let's go over here. Um, so for, okay, so for y equals to 1 half. Okay, we got 
uh, we're going to have sine x equals to 1 half. For y equals to negative 1, we're going to get sine x equals to minus 1. Okay. All right. So for the first one, uh, for sine x equals to 1 half, okay, again, looking at the, uh, we have to go back to the unit circle, okay. So just go ahead and enter this one here. Okay. All right, so sine x equals to 1 half. Okay, so that's going to occur. Uh, the first angle is going to be, that's going to be at pi over 6. Okay. So this corresponds to angle pi over 6. So that is the length of 1 half. And we also get 1 half over here for 5 pi over 6. Okay, so those are the solutions uh, for this equation here. And, okay, all right, so we have uh, x equals to pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, for negative 1, okay, uh, that's going to be down here. Okay, so we have 0 minus 1, so that occurs at 3 pi over 2. Okay. However, remember that we're on a, we're on a uh, restricted domain. Okay. We're going between 0 and pi over 2. So the values of 5 pi over 6 okay, and 3 pi over 2 are outside those, it's outside those values. Okay. All right, so the only critical number that we have uh, that we're, that's gonna that we're going to need is pi over six. Okay. All right, so that's the next step. Okay, we need to go ahead and evaluate uh, evaluate the function. So this way, this way. So evaluate the function at the critical numbers. Okay. In this case, we just have one critical number of five pi over six and the endpoints. endpoints corresponding to our restricted domain, okay, which is, in this case, 0 and pi over 2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have, for our function, okay, we have 2 times cosine x plus sine 2x, okay. So let's go ahead and evaluate the function at 0, okay, at the first boundary point. So we have 2 times cosine of 0 plus, okay, 2 times 0 is just 0. And so we're going to end up getting, so cosine 0 is 1, so we and sine 0 is 0, so we get 2, okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate the function at our critical number, which was pi over 6. So we have 2 times cosine of pi over 6 plus sine times... 2 times pi over 6, right, that's going to give us pi over 3, okay. So we have 2 times cosine pi over 6 is root 3 over 2, and sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So we end up getting 3 times root 3 over 2, okay. So let's evaluate the function at the last endpoint, which was pi over 2. Okay. So 2 
cosine of pi over 2 plus sine of 2 times pi over 2 is just pi. So we end up getting uh, 2 times 0, so cosine pi over 2 is 0, and sine pi is 0, so we end up getting 2 here. Okay. All right, so now we compare. Okay, so that's the third step. So we compare our... Okay, so we compare the y values. Okay. Uh, okay, cosine... Oh, okay, I, here, actually, sorry. I think I made a mistake here. So cosine pi over 2 is 0, sorry. So we get 2 times 0 plus sine pi is 0. So we get 0 here, sorry. Okay, so now we compare the y values, okay? Um, so we're going to have an absolute maximum, okay? All right, so looking at here, we're going to have an absolute maximum at 3 square root of 3 over 2, okay? Okay, so these are the y values that we got. Okay, so we have an absolute maximum here. Okay, that's the largest value in this set. And then we have an absolute minimum here. This is the smallest. It is the smallest y value in our set. Okay, so our solutions, okay, so again we have the absolute max. Okay, that's going to be at pi over 6, 3 root 3 over 2, and we have an absolute minimum at, what was it, uh, pi over 2, zero okay okay so uh, so below here is the graph of our function that we're given okay so we're so we're going between zero and two and pi over two okay so you can see at pi over six okay we get the value right of three root three over two so we have an absolute maximum here and the value at pi over 2 we got was 0 okay so that function is crossing the uh, x-axis at that point so that is the that is our absolute minimum okay um, on this particular interval. Okay, so those are our solutions.